Forge World sucks, but it doesn't have to. Forge World is a weird little subsidiary to Games Workshop. They're sort of the exact same thing, and they made perfect sense 20 years ago. Forge World as it exists today is kind of frustrating and confusing and annoying. Because, you know, 20 years ago, it made perfect sense to have something like Forge World. Games Workshop Plastic and Pewter was not that great, and there was this lovely thing called Forge World where you could get beautiful resin miniatures. Resin is a better material than plastic if you want to capture really, really nice, crisp, fine detail. And most of the resin miniatures I have bought have been immaculate. Just a few parts, easy, easy cleanup. You put them together and you have something really nice. But all of those miniatures that I just gushed over were not Forge World miniatures. I bought a couple of minis here and there from Forge World and they're okay, but the real problem with Forge World is that one of their big selling points is things like this. This Titan, larger tanks, squads of guys that are meant to be kitbashed and converted. And at that point, it almost gets a little bit dangerous to have them all manufactured in resin because you're cutting and filing and sanding and dremeling and it creates resin dust that's very toxic. It's just kind of nasty. And now that we're, you know, in 2023, Forge World makes even less sense because Games Workshop and Forge World, the quality is basically exactly the same, except plastic is such a much better material to work with. And so, you know, the only thing that Forge World has to offer is 28 millimeter miniatures that are even more expensive than Games Workshop's already really, really expensive prices. I can't imagine Forge World is going to hang in there that, that much longer. I mean, Forge World kind of invented the recasting scene just because their prices were so bad and the models are just resin cast figures. It's super easy to take a resin miniature and just recast it, where it's very, very hard to do that with like a plastic injection molded sprue. And so I think Forge World could make some changes, some really, really big changes and become something that we actually really, really like as opposed to Forge World. It's like Games Workshop, but way more expensive. I mean, I know Nick and I are thinking of playing Aeronautica Imperialis. We have the starter box and Nick was looking at the Orc Mega Bomber and it's a really, really nice figure. It comes in like 60s parts for a model the size of my hand and it's $108. No, <laughs> that's just a no. It's it's way, way overpriced, and it really should just be made by Games Workshop. In fact, pretty much every single thing from Forge World should be made by Games Workshop. Forge World offered something at the time that Games Workshop couldn't. Super high quality miniatures set in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. And so I think the obvious answer is to just do that again. Have Forge World be something that offers things you can't get from Games Workshop. And having built one of these Titans, the Warhound Titan, I can definitely say that as it exists right now, these are not worth it. This is a 10 pound resin miniature that took God, 40 hours to put together. It was an absolute nightmare and it will break one day because it's so much weight. But I think that if Forge World wanted to continue to make Titans and if Games Workshop wanted to continue to make Titans because people love them, they're big and they're impressive and they're really fun and they have rules in the game, they should be Gundams. People love Gundams. I've put together some of Bandai Star Wars gundam -y models and they're, they're really lovely. It's kind of the very similar feel to Lego. Lego is really, really fun to put together. The bricks are beautiful and shiny and colorful and you put them together and that's really the fun of Legos. Like the fun of 40K for the most part is having your finished piece and playing the game. Some people get a lot of enjoyment out of building miniatures. I also get a lot of enjoyment out of building miniatures, but at this point, I have built so, so many that a lot of the charm of building them is worn off. And really, it's just I want to get it done and have it in my collection. And, you know, you build, you know, you build one guardsman and it's a lot of fun. You build 29 more, 100 more. The building starts to become a lot less fun. But if Titans were Gundams, it would be amazing. You could actually enjoy the process and it would solve all of the engineering mistakes that the current Titans have because they're very, very heavy. You need to take dremels and saws to these things. Clippers are not going to do it. 
you have to use different types of glues because super glue isn't strong enough. You have to drill holes into your nearly thousand dollar miniature to insert metal pins just so that the thing doesn't fall apart. That's, you can't have that. Very few people are willing to put up with these Titans only for the spectacle of them. But if they were Gundams, you know, mostly hollow, really, really good engineering, you wouldn't have to worry about any of that stuff. And you could actually pose the things. These Titans are almost impossible to pose because they're so heavy. And most of the parts just sort of, they don't slot together. They just sort of nest together. And so really, if you wanted to pose this thing, you have to kind of hand fit it all together because you can't use poster putty to hold pieces in place because it's not strong enough. You almost need a team, a team of friends to all stand around the unbuilt Titan and kind of hold the parts in place and be like, okay, okay, with left leg forward. Okay, now po point the gun straight. Now take the, le the toes and kind of curl them in and now rotate the body 30 degrees. Okay, somebody take a picture of that so we can sort of figure out how we need to put it together. But Gundams are completely poseable out of the box. They actually use, often use um, different types of materials, more rubbery plastics on the joints so that there's a lot more friction. And a lot of the parts that have options are kind of geared so that you can set them to these different angles. Like if these Titan legs were geared on every joint so that they just kind of stayed put once you would put them in place, it would be Perfect! You could actually get some really, really cool dynamic posing out of these Titans. Instead of appealing to just super fans of 40k who are willing to put up with anything to have the biggest, most impressive miniatures, all of a sudden you have people who just want to have a really, really fun evening. And so they, you know, they get one of these big Forge World Titan boxes and they open it up and it's a hundred sprues. And you just, it's like having, it's like if you get like a 10,000 piece puzzle. It's just a fun little thing to work on in the evenings. Maybe Forge World Titans can be fun little things to work on in the evenings. Clip a couple of pieces from the sprue, you know, get the toe curled just how you want it. Maybe put the plasma, gl the, pl the glowy, glowy plasma bits into it. You can print those, you can make those in a different color, maybe a transparent green. Maybe have a couple of options in the box if you want a pink plasma glow or a blue plasma glow. You can make these really, really interesting models. And Games Workshop has already dipped their toe into non just standard issue model kits for their miniatures. You can buy the, uh, the, the, there's a Bandai is making some, some Space Marine kits. There's a bunch of them out there, these action figures. And that's just Games Workshop kind of testing the waters and making money off of their intellectual property. But really, if they want something really strong, they gotta keep it in-house. Forge World should be the place to go if you want more 40k stuff, but something that you can't get from normal Games Workshop. Gundam Titans would be so cool and you could get so many more details and intricate me mechanics and technology into those things. It'd be all hollow so you could really easily get like LEDs in there to make all of the different parts glow, have the eyes glow a color. And you could probably bring the price way down because they're plastic. And so at least cut the prices in half. Cut the prices in half and sell a much better product and a very unique product. That would be amazing. I mean, I would I would probably be more interested in actually getting some of these ridiculous miniatures. And they still have points in game. So you can have people who just want to put it together and have a cool action figure for the shelf. And you get people who are like, yeah, it's a Gundam, but I also want to paint the whole thing and make it, put it on a base and make it playable in games of 40K. And so you're servicing your old, you know, your old customers and you're servicing all of these new customers who want something like that. I you know, I know a bunch of people who play 40K, but they also collect Gundams because Gundams, they're just better. It's a different thing to standard Wargaming kits, but the Gundams are just better. They're engineering marvels and they don't cost that much. And so there's a lot that uh, there's a lot to be said for Gundam's kind of being better than, you know, 40K gaming miniatures. And so I think the, 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 the Titans turn into Gundams, all of the other little things like the boxed games and the 30K and Necromunda, all of those things just get turned into regular Games Workshop plastic kits sold in the Games Workshop web store. I think it'd be worth it for them to keep the hero or the, uh, the 30K character series in resin because those miniatures are pretty darn good. They're fairly small and they don't require as much cleanup and maintenance and just overall stress as one of these humongous kits. 
And there's one more thing I think that Forge World could sell that would service new customers and their old customers, and that is props. The same people who turn these things into Gundams could make lovely 40k props. Chain swords, light up plasma pistols, servo skulls. Those would be really cool. So many people want stuff like that. I mean, every single day I see people turning their airsoft guns and nerf guns into space marine bolt guns. There, it is a market that is not being tapped, except Etsy. <laughs> but that's not official. It'd be really cool to have official, beautiful, licensed, awesome stuff sold by Forge World that you could just get. And I think that that would be that would be a great way to take Forge World and turn it into what it used to be. You still want something from the Warhammer 40k universe, but you can't get it from Games Workshop, but you can get it from Forge World. I mean, imagine picking up a Warlord Titan Gundam and a chain sword. I mean, all of a sudden you've decorated an entire wall of your house because of how big this stuff is. And it would be lovely. I don't think any of this stuff is going to happen, but it really should. Forge World can't keep just being Forge World, being the really, really expensive, not as good Games Workshop. And I would love to know more about the behind the scenes of how they decide, okay, this product is good enough to be sold on Games Workshop, or we don't expect to sell as many of these or for people to be as excited in this product, so we're going to leave it with Forge World. I mean, that doesn't inspire a lot of confidence and love in this other company, this other poor company, Forge World, but it could. Forge World could be great, and I think they have all of the necessary things for greatness, like these Titans, but currently, as Forge World exists, it's just not, it's just not good enough. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Forge World, and is it fine? Is it fine for Forge World to be Forge World, or do you think the Forge World could be so much better? Because I want better from Forge World, because I just want more 40k, but uh, 10 pound resin titans ain't cutting it. But speaking of things that aren't quite awesome, you know it is awesome, that's right, our Patreon. Every single month we have new STL terrain packs, this month we have the Goblin Rave Cave. Yes, you heard that right, Goblin Rave Cave, a deep dark underground cave system, perfect for your miniature war games. We also make one extra episode of Eons of Battle every single week where we take a look at our viewers' miniatures and give them some ideas and critiques of how to improve their painting. We have painting guide PDFs, host live Discord hangouts, and we have a new tier where you can get your name on one of my Black Templar Space Marines. I now have a Titan, and I can tell you, they're not worth it, but they really could be. Forge World, I hope you're listening.